Hey there, gang. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matt Pucci. I'm so insanely excited. Tomorrow's the big day, the total solar eclipse. We pulled Nautable. We moved everybody from Texas up here to Maine, where the cloud cover looks a little bit lesser. Better chance of seeing it. So yes, it is definitely a big day. Go to myradar.com slash eclipse for more information about, of course, the path of totality and for our live stream tomorrow. Originally, we were supposed to be in San Antonio. Clouds look iffy there. The path goes from San Antonio to Dallas, Fort Worth, Little Rock, Arkansas, Indianapolis, all the way to Cleveland, Buffalo, Rochester, and up here in Northern Maine. So again, we are super excited for it. Stay tuned. Now inside that path of totality, day will turn to night as the moon blocks the sun and you'll get to see the solar corona, the sun's atmosphere, weather permitting, of course. Outside that zone, you can enjoy the show too, to a lesser extent with a partial solar eclipse, meaning at least part of the sun will still be visible and you have to keep the glasses on. But of course, there's one big wild card, the weather. The big issue is this, these two bowling ball upper level lows, pockets of cold air, low pressure and spin spinning counterclockwise and they scoop moisture northwards. They also pull the jet stream down, then back up again across the central plains and the Great Lakes, dragging those clouds north. That's pulling a veil of at least high thin cirrus clouds and perhaps some mid-level clouds across much of Texas. I think Dallas South will be very problematic. Farther northeast, Dallas towards like Texarkana along I-20, I-30 might be a little bit better in that path of totality. For Arkansas and Missouri, there will be some clouds and some sun, but we can't really predict where those breaks in the cloud cover will be quite yet. For Indiana, I think the dry slot of low pressure will be pushing through. That's dry air on the backside of a cold front and low pressure. But the question is, does it get here in time? Do we finally get that drying in time for the eclipse? We're not sure. Farther east into Ohio, it looks like a little more mid to low level cloud cover. But again, it's not a wash. There will be some brighter spots. Over New York State, Vermont, and New Hampshire, there will probably be some high thin cirrus clouds and like 30, 35,000 feet, the outflow, the exhaust of the upper levels from our low pressure system, but it won't be enough to blot out the sun. It'll just be a veil to kind of filter that out. So you'll still see like the, the blackness of the moon blocking the sun, but you may not see the solar corona, which is obviously the number one part. Maine, though, is the place to be. There's like next to no cloud cover to forecast whatsoever. It's cloudy here right now. This will all go away. Now, there could be some morning clouds until like 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, especially over the mountains. Those will burn off, and then the second half of the day looks picture perfect. That's why we're here. The only issue, though, temperatures will be warm tomorrow, meaning 50s to near 60 in spots. All that snow that's left over is melting. That's why the river down there behind our Airbnb is so high, and so it's mud season up here. A lot of outer towners are going to try to drive on the muddy roadways. Don't do it, you'll get stuck. The weather service, AAA, everybody's warning of that. So again, it's mud season, take it easy. Now let's briefly talk about the coast because both coasts are outside that path of totality. And on the east coast, there will be some scattered clouds here and there. Again, certainly not overcast skies. And honestly, with a partial eclipse, some cloud cover isn't a bad thing because you might be able to see the outline of the sun through the clouds. You still want to keep those glasses on as precaution, though. California and the Rockies look pretty good, but the Pacific Northwest could have a couple clouds pushing in with the jet stream in the afternoon. A lot of folks are going to be in Texas, and there's a pretty decent risk of severe weather in the afternoon, evening, and into Tuesday as well. A few tornadoes are even possible in that path of totality. We're talking Interstate 35, San Antonio, Austin, Waco, even up towards Dallas, Fort Worth, and a lot of folks will be on that highway in the evening. There could also be some severe hail too. We're talking in some places bigger than golf balls. That's why there's this hatching on the Storm Prediction Center's outlook. Now the storms are forming as a result of a clash along a dry line. Warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico clashes with hot, dry desert air. They bump into each other, they make the storms, and they could linger overnight into early Tuesday and redevelop Tuesday afternoon as well. You could even see this high resolution model simulating some rotation tracks on the northern edge of the warm, moist air right near the Red River. That's where there could be more low level helicity or spin to get some tornadoes cooking as well. And with that, we're just barely 24 hours away from what may very well be the best day of my life. I've seen a couple of these before. They're just incredible. Matt Highland has been here every step of the way. He's behind the camera. Jack is down there. Jack, wave. Jack's down there. He, he kind of waved, but half credit for him. He's down there getting a Starlink ready for our stream. MyRadar.com slash Eclipse. Highly recommend. It'll be a great stream. Erica's in traffic right now, but we'll all be together. The whole family will be here. And uh, yeah, it's going to be an incredible, incredible, amazing show.